Hello everyone and welcome to this introduction to Rika and Avalon uh, post Phantom Nightmare. I have seen a lot of people um, trying to build the deck in a way which I think is not very competitive, playing too many breaks, um, playing too big of an engine requirement and I want to uh, give a bit of a helping hand to maybe steer our conversation around the deck in a better uh, direction that is more competitive. So first of all, um, we will be talking about the new cards that were added in Phantom Nightmare in case you do not know them. Uh, then we will discuss what these cards do and accomplish for the deck and how we can like uh, build the deck going forward with these new cards. Uh, I will introduce what I think might be the best solution that I have seen so far and show you a few combos using that particular build and how it also plays through with a few hand traps you like you know impermanent jasmine and shifter and afterwards because it has like a slightly different engine requirement than before i will also introduce a few uh, spicy deck building ideas that you know maybe can improve the deck uh, going forward so um, if you should you know want to skip to any particular instance in the video you can just do that there should be chapters that uh, make it easier for you to skip around. First of all, we have one of the three new monsters added in Phantom Nightmare, which is Aroma Lilith Rosalina. Unsummon, this card can special summon an Aroma and non-tuner from our deck, and then we are plant locked for special summons for the rest of the turn. Uh, this effect is often compared to, you know, tour guide. Uh, the big difference here is that we cannot special summon from our hand, uh, which does come up sadly uh, when we're talking about engine requirements and bricks uh, but we will discuss that at a later point in this video. Um, it also has a second effect which is a quick effect uh, to discard it and target an aroma monster you control and then we gain half the attack of a uh, monster as life points. Uh, this card is a one card starter for the full combo uh, with the exception that we do not special summon regulars obviously uh, we keep Vericos on hand for follow-up. It's also the best normal summon going second because it produces two bodies and our externals either want to plant in graveyard or on field, which in the case of, for example, an SP banish spot removal on our normal summon otherwise could be quite difficult. Uh, the most relevant target for this card is Aramage Laurel. Um, which is a non-tuner. Uh, this card cannot summon Aroma Seraphage Angelica, which is a card that some people have been experimenting with because that card is a tuner. We will thus uh, discuss that later. This card can also summon Aromage Jasmine, not to be confused with Aroma Seraphage Jasmine, the extra deck monster. Aromage Jasmine allows us to have an extra normal summon for a plant monster if we have more life in our opponent, which can be used for degenerate post side plays like Cactus Bouncer, which is like a vanity suite essentially for plants. And a lot of people I have seen also talk about the level 5 monster, uh, Marjoram, to then go into the level 6 synchro suite Marjoram. Uh, I think that Marjoram is a brick, the synchro monster, the targeting protection it provides, doesn't solve any problems the deck actually has, so really I, I highly recommend that you do not play it. Uh, the second monster that was added was Aroma Lilith Rosemary. Uh, on summon, this card is a rota for any aroma card, not just monsters, any aroma card. It has a trigger effect that, that if we gain life points, we can special summon aroma monsters from our hand to uh, her link zones. This is a great for extension place and will come up in our combos. And it also has a third effect, which is that we can tribute any monster it points to, including like non plants. Say we got nibbed and we can tribute the nib, and then target a card on field. We then banish red card and gain 1000 life points. This third effect is our first instance of you know proper in engine back row removal that isn't you know Glimmer Search, the Predator Plant, Spidey Orchid, which honestly is cope. And the third effect can be used to trigger its own second effect as well, meaning we can banish something and then special from hand for extension as we break boards. A potential target uh, that is quite interesting for Rosemary is Aroma Blend. 
This is a spell card that says we discard one card for cost and then we can place one of the three uh, continuous trap wins cards from our hand or deck in the spell and trap zone. And while it's in graveyard, it has the effect to um, banish from graveyard or field to fusion summon a plant, fusion monster, uh, or if all life points are hold on, higher than our opponents, we can also, you know, use it as a miracle fusion. The three options are Dwight Winds, which is honestly trash, Blessed Winds, which is a very powerful card, uh, but means that Blend will remain a brick, and Humid Winds, which makes this a 1.5 card starter for a full combo. We will talk more about the Winds cards later in the video. And for now, just know that this is an option. And the fusion monster that we would be summoning with Blend most of the time is not, you know, Drake Sapelia or something. It is this new card, which is Aroma Lil of Magnolia. Um, it has an ignition effect that is, we can pay 2000 life points and then non target banish cards equal to the amount of the Aroma Winds cards we currently control. Usually, that is one. I don't think you want to play more than two because breaks, but you know, we will again talk about that later. It also has a trigger effect that if we gain life points, which this card doesn't do by itself, we can increase the attack of our plant monsters by the same amount we gained. And if we have more life points, this card can uh, allow our monsters, like our plant monsters, not to be destroyed by a card effect. Now, um, this pairs with Rosemary, the link free for a 1000 attack boost, which can be quite powerful just by summoning, like, you know, very small monsters which are usual zero attack we can actually push for game now which somewhat makes up for the fact that we don't have easy access to the fresher otk anymore as you know we usually cycle through our one copy of dryas while we just try to make the board or like break the board in the first place before we can even go into battle phase plays i've seen some people talk about this card as if this were the solution to our fire king matchup it is not um, the destruction protection really does not help us at all. Most of their spot removal isn't even destruction in the first place. It's absolute cope. This is not an endboard piece, okay? Thank you. Um, lastly, we have Aroma Healing, which is trash. You do not play it. Now, we have a few build options using these new cards. Um, first of all, we have like the small Aroma packages, which would be uh, the same list as before Phantom Nightmare and post ban list where we just add one Laurel um, or we use that build and then add the Link 3 uh, Rosemary as a toolbox option to you know contest back row that we otherwise cannot is say for example um, a Kashira birth or the likes which would usually destroy us in the grind game otherwise. We can also add one Rosalina as a Jasmine special target um, and secondary starter. Those are like the smaller aroma packages. Then we have the bigger aroma packages uh, with three Rosalina since it is a starter and one to two Laurel. Um, if we play two Laurel then obviously drawing one Laurel isn't as hard of a brick etc which is a consideration also. Uh, in some combos we might need a second Laurel but we will talk about that later again. We can also add aroma therapy Angelica additionally to that um, or we can do we blend package with either blessed winds or humid winds again dried winds is not competitive please don't play it um, I've also seen some people try to play Angelica together with the blend package I think at that point you're double dipping you include too many breaks too many cards that are bad to draw either of the two works and gives you the stronger combos that you might possibly want to play then there are other considerations like do we play Fumerans at all since, you know, Rosalina will commonly be our starter and that plant locks us so we cannot access the uh, Regulus Omni Negate. Um, maybe we play a bigger Sanavalon package. We will talk about that too. So first of all, the pros of a small Aroma package are that we have a lower card count, which means that we draw strong cards like Unexpected Die more often. Um, we also play less bricks. And just with like playing the link free, we already gain a bit more push going second than we had before. The cons, this is, I will be clear about that. Um, this is relative to the bigger like packages. This is not relative to what we had before. Um, 
we have less starches since you know Rosalina is a starcher and we could play it. Um, we have less push going second than a bigger Pekka, which might have. We have less follow up, and the board dies to board breakups quite easily. Um, now this might be a bit confusing, but this should be very obvious if we look at the board that we currently have without the new aroma support, which is you know six interrupts or five plus con con with uh, T-Drop, Bangalancer, Hyperion, Regulus, uh, Princess, and Konkon as the interrupts. And for example, if you get Super Polity for Hyperion and Regulus, uh, they have a Mud Dragon, all of your stuff targets except for Princess, so you have to Princess Tribute it, but that also means they have to play in a way that lets you tribute the Mud Dragon first of all. And it's quite awful if this board gets broken, you don't have as much follow-up. So uh, this might not be good enough moving forward. Then we have the big aroma package without Angelica Augment. This gives us more slashes, slightly more follow-up, and also allows us to more easily end on Strena and Sheet. This is possible with just two Laurel. Um, these lines will, however, not be included in this video. It's just outside of the scope. Um, negatives for this are but we still have to play two melees which means that our extra deck is full of sonavalon cards and we can only access those plays properly if we have access to our loci which we might not always have and despite you know the added engine the deck still struggles with playing through hand traps more than it would if we play you know a different package which we will come back to and then we have the big aroma package with Angelica, which, you know, gets bigger combos. Angelica can be an extra body in the grind game because it revives itself and it's an extender. But I want to be clear here that for it to be an extender, what we need is we need an aroma name in the graveyard and an aroma name on field, which if we get to that point, we probably already play. So effectively, this card is a brick not a real extender and it doesn't actually let us play through hand traps much more than we otherwise would be able to it's also not as much help going second as the blend packages because we don't have access to you know the fusion plays and a bit of the extension that provides now i've talked about the blend package and the wins cards um, but what wins card do we actually want to play the first option is Human Wins, which has two effects. First effect is that we pay 1000 life points uh, as cost and then can search an aroma monster from the deck to hand. If we have less life points than our opponent, we can also gain 500 life points once per turn, and we can use both of these effects in the same turn. The pros of this are fairly obvious. This pairs with Rosemary to special summon Rosalina, you just you know, you summon Rosemary, you place this, you search Rosalina and then use the effect to gain and trigger the Rosemary effect to special Rosalina and then Rosalina special Laurel and we can extend from there. This also gives us follow up in the form of, you know, searching for another copy of Rosalina and it turns blend into a starter. This also lets us play through hand traps and we will see those lines later. The negative of this is that the grind game that this card adds only lasts as long as our main deck aroma resources, which aren't too big. Usually by turn 4 or 5 we don't have any more targets left in deck, and this card becomes essentially just a heal generator or completely useless. The next option that a lot of people seem to experiment with is Blessed Lens. Um, this has three effects, only one of which can be used per turn. The first effect is to send a plant monster from hand or field to the graveyard and gain 5,000 life points. The second effect is to shuffle a plant from the graveyard into the deck and gain 500 life points. Or the third effect that is often used in combos is to pay 1,000 life points and special summon an aroma monster from the graveyard. Um, this special summon does include link monsters and fusion monsters that were properly fusion summoned, which would be the case with aroma blend, for example. This basically adds infinite grind to the deck and very, very strong follow-up. But blend remains a brick because just blend into place this does not get us anywhere. It's also awkward to use in some extension plays. Uh, and Dwight wins uh, 
we will go through the effects, but yeah. <laughs> it has a trigger effect when we gain life points to target an opponent's card and destroy it. This is a mandatory effect, which means you cannot hold it. Um, it's awkward to time. And if we control an all moments on head, have at least 3,000 life points more than our opponent, we can pay the difference and destroy all monsters with less attack than the amount paid that our opponent controls. This card is awful, it's win more, it doesn't solve any problems, it doesn't get us anywhere. If we have more than 3,000 life more than our opponent, then we're already winning by such a huge margin that, you know, it, this will never come up. Please don't play it. Now, um, a big aroma package with humid winds has the advantage of an even bigger combo. Uh, and those lines do not need melee or thrasher, freeing up a bit of space in the extra deck that is otherwise taken up by Magnolia. Uh, this adds more starters and a strong follow-up, as well as push going second. Discarding, however, can be quite awkward, especially going second or with a few non-engine cards like Super Poly or, you know, Droplets that also need relevant discard amounts. And Humid is a brick. It, it remains a brick, it's an awful brick, it's just a dead card in hand. And we will also have to play a fairly big engine to make use of this package properly. Now, the Humid Winds combo lines that we will be looking at, because I do think this is the best solution going forward, are one, we start with Loka in a discard and get to what is essentially the old two card full combo board before the ban list. Um, we also have a secondary play, uh, which ends on an interrupt less, but you know, a bit more follow up, a bit more gas on the tank. And, a board that is slightly less susceptible to super polymerization. Uh, then we have the Rosa plus discard combo, which is you know our six interrupt combo with Pavlon Graveyard, and the blend plus discard combo, which is also six interrupts, but slightly stronger than the Rosa board. We will also look at what happens if Jasmine gets hit by Imperm, and what nine to play if we get hit by Shifter decks. Now the caveats here are uh, I like um we cannot go through all of the combos because the lines that are optimal differ based on the amount of Loro we play, amount of Lone Fire Plasm we play, the amount of Melius we play, the amount of Sunman Links we play, or Dance Peon hits. It's just not possible at this point to include all of the combos that are possible or optimal. Most of them aren't mapped out. What we need to do first of all is find you know, the, the ratios that we all agree are the best and then we build combos for those ratios and not the other way around. Um, the requirements for the combos in, that I'm showing off here are like two Rosalina, two Laurel, one Lonefire and one Melius for the Super Poly lines. We will always assume that Dance Peon misses. Um, if it hits, we might be able to, you know, do slightly different plays, have slightly more follow-up, uh, but those aren't sensible to include in this video. I want to give shoutouts to Beto, Tolkaya and LMT for helping me develop these combos. And if you find uh, combos that are similar to these with like lower engine requirements or better boards with the same engine requirements, let me know in the comments. I'm not certain that these are already optimal. We had you know, you know, a few progressions, uh, but uh, nobody's perfect. So first of all, we start with uh, Lokai and the discard. We normal summon Lokai, link it off into Dryas, search and activate Soul into Special Twin, chaining one twin target Lokai, chaining two Dryas to special healer from extra, then healer target Dryas to gain 300, putting our life points at 8,300. We then link off into Jasmine, and then Jasmine triggers to special summon Laura from deck. We link off into second Jasmine and trigger Laura to gain 500, triggering both Jasmines for two searches to add Borea and one of the relevant trigger cards both being Snowdrop, Petal, or one of either Princess or Mudan, which either of the last two you don't search with Jasmine during the combos, uh, you will just search with Petal later. We special summon Borea, send it equip to search for this Colosseum and activate it to search Regulus. We link off Borea and Jasmine into Rosemary and search Blend, then special summon Regulus. We activate Blend, pitch free blind card and place Human Winds. At this point, since our life points are higher, we can use the effect of blend in the graveyard to summon Magnolia. I like banishing one of the link ones here. 
Link Magnolia and Jasmine off into the third Jasmine, then activate Humid to search Rosalina. Use Humid's second effect to gain 500 and Chain Link 1 Jasmine chain to Rosemary's special. Jasmine adds another Rika for the combo, in this case we add Sunder Drop, uh, then on resolution Rosa effect to special the second lower from deck. Now we use the Train Graveyard effect to banish itself and the Jasmine on field and revive the Jasmine from Graveyard. We ban Tribute one of the monsters Rosemary points to, to banish this Colosseum and gain 1000 life, triggering our last Jasmine search. In this case we added Petal and now we have the needed combination of Snowdrop, Petal and one out of Princess Omuda. We tribute the Jasmine to Snowdrop special itself and Petal, Petal search Mudan, Princess special itself. Then we use Snowdrop effect targeting Princess to make all our plant monsters level 4. And if you are familiar with pre balanced combos, this pattern of 4 plants with level 4 and Mudan hand should be familiar. We overlay for double strunner, making sure that one of them has Petal and Princess as material and ban tribute that Strenna off from Mudan, then shank one Mudan shank to Strenna to special Hyperiton, then Mudan resolves adding Konkon to hand. We activate Konkon, then use Hyperiton effect to attach a spell from Grave, which in this case had to be sowing because we banished this Colosseum, uh, and then we use Konkon effect to set Sheep. We now have the full board in what used to be a two card combo, previously off of just Lokai and any discard. If you look at this board and don't like the threat of Regulus and Hyperion getting hit by Super Poly as your follow up is minimal, uh, then the next combo off of just Loka and the discard may be more interesting to you for much of the play of the card. We again start with Loka and any blank. Uh, we do the same sewing line as before, go into two Jasmine triggered by Laurel, um, set up with Regulus and search blend. And this is where the line start to diverge. After placing Humid, we won't immediately use its second effect on Miracle Fusion into Magnolia. Instead, we special Princess and link it and Jasmine off into Melias. Since we now have two Jasmines in Grave, we can use Twin Effect to banish itself and Melias and revive one of the Jasmines. We use Humid to search Rosa and then Humid to gain 500, chaining one Jasmine, chaining two Rosemary to special Rosa. Jasmine adds Mudan and on res, uh, we use Rosa effect to special the second roll from deck. We link off Rosemary and one of the monsters into Dance Peon. We will assume that we do not hit any plant for this combo, uh, but if you do hit a plant, then you will not need to use the blind effect to summon Magnolia later and can instead keep that for a turn 3 push for game. We tribute off whatever we hit, uh, or the plant below Dance Peon, to special Mudan into a Dance Peon zone, and then use her effect to search Konkon and use its effect to set Sheep. Afterwards, we use Dance Peon to target the Princess in Grave and make our plants level 4. We overlay for Strenna and use its effect to add back Laurel, which we can then special summon from our hand since we have more life in our opponent. Uh, should we not have a plan previously, we will now use the effect of Blend to special summon Magnolia as well. We then link off into Bangalancer and we are done. This board can still be hit by Super Poly, however it only trades for one interrupt on board. We also gain extra follow up off of Humid since we can use the second effect of Rosalina discard. Uh, or off of just Rosalina Discord or the uh, Humid effect, the second effect to gain life and then tree adjustment and search any plan. For example, we can search uh, Borea and target Regulus and Graveyard first to action on main phase one. We will also still have a lot more gas in the tank and the extra. We still have Hyperiton, we have the Fur Jasmine, we have Teardrop, we have Magnolia potentially. We still have Snowdrop left in deck. Um, our turn 3 crackback is thus quite a bit stronger than with the other combo, even though this board is slightly weaker than before. Note that a similar board is possible for other starters as well, uh, but to save some time we will not be going through those lines today. Now we start with the Rosalina combo and a discard. We obviously start with just her in the blank discard, we normal summon Rosa and use the effect of special lore from deck. We link the two off into Jasmine, trigger the Laurel, and thus the Jasmine, and add Princess to hand. We then special Princess and trigger it off with Jasmine to special Lone Fire. Lone Fire will then trigger Jasmine to special Loki. We then do the standard sewing play, paying attention that the monsters are placed in zones 1, 3, 5, and then link off Dries and Twin into Dance Peon and assume a miss. It's very important that you do not link off Healer at this point, as we will need it later. 
Dance Beyond makes V2 months is level 4, and we overlay for Strena and use its effect to add back Laurel from Graveyard. After we have done that, uh, we use the Effecto Special from Hand. We link off Dance Peon and Laurel into Rosemary, add Blend, use it to place Humid, discard in your blank, and then use Blend's second Effecto Special Magnolia. We link the two Aroma Layers off into the second Jasmine, then use Humid to search Rosa. Since we then have less life than our opponent, we can now use Humid Effect to gain 500, trigger and Jasmine to search Borea. We now special Borea and add Disco and activate it to add Regulus. We won't be able to summon Regulus this turn since Rosalina's effect plant locked us for special summons, but we have Regulus for follow up in turn 3 this way. I made a minor mistake while taking this next picture here, uh, but it is inconsequential. We link off Borea and Jasmine into the third Jasmine, which here should be in the MZ but is not, and then use Twin Effect to banish itself on Tila to arrive with Jasmine. We now use Rosalina's discard effect, targeting one of the Jasmines on field and gain 900 life, tricking our two Jasmines and allowing us to search Petal and Snowdrop. We tribute off Strena to special Snowdrop and Petal, then trigger Strena effect to special summon Hyperiton. Petal then searches Mudan and gets tributed for its summon, and Mudan searches Konkon. Now Snowdrop targets itself to make Mudan a level 8 as well. We overlay for Tree Drop, link off into Bengal Answer, and activate Konkon, allowing us to activate Hyper to achieve attached to him as a spell negate. We then use Konkon to set Chi and pass. Note that there is a line to end on Strena if you play two Lone Fire, you just need to not overlay into Strena early on and leave one of the level 4s from Dan's effect on field, linking the overlay into Rosemary. Then we add the second Lone Fire instead of Petal in the combo and the rest you can probably figure out yourself. Next we will be looking at a combo that is somewhat similar to the one we just looked at. Um, but it gets to a slightly more resilient board through different sequencing. We start with just blend and a blank that we can discard. We need to place Humid and then search Rosalina. Uh, we normally summon Rosalina, especially Laurel, and link them off into Jasmine, triggering Laurel and then Jasmine to search Borea this time. We do the usual Fear on stuff and trigger Rosa to special Lone Fire. Same as before, we use Lone Fire to access the Sunlight Zoning play. Uh, but unlike before, we will now immediately link into the second and third adjustment, and if you look at our life points, you might already see why. We use Humid's second effect to gain 500, triggering both adjustments. We then search Princess and Snowdrop. Uh, note that it isn't important which you search here, we just want to get to Petal, Snowdrop, and one out of Mood and our Princess in hand again. We link off the adjustment in the AMZ, and the last monster with a level into Rosemary and search lower this time. Since we now have more life than our opponent, we can use the Milk or Fusion uh, Magnolia play, and because we have two Jasmines and Grave, we can now use the Banish Twin effect and Banish the third Jasmine and Twin to revive the Jasmine from Graveyard. We then use Rosemary effect to trigger Magnolia and Banish this Colosseum and gain 1000 life points, triggering the Jasmine and allowing us to search the last missing Rika piece. We tribute Jasmine to Snowdrop's special self on Petal, Petal search for a missing Rika, Laurel special summon itself, Princess special summon itself, and then Snowdrop targets Princess to make all monsters like level 4. And then it's just the same as before. Um, we overlay into double Strena, special summon Mudan, Shining Gone Mudan, add Kong Kong, Shining 2 Strena, special summon Hyper, link away Mudan and Rosemary into Bengal Lancer, Strena add back Mudan, activate Kong Kong, Hyper gets Spell Negate, Kong Kong sets Sheep. We end on what is essentially a full combo board, just regulars on hand as follow up instead of on field as a negate. Next up, I want to look at a specific case of what we can accomplish if Jasmine gets impermed, or more specifically, what to do in the scenario that we started with Loki and Jasmine's effect to special summon from deck gets hit by imperm. Previously, Joshua Schmidt correctly outlined that doing so would limit the field substantially, only guaranteeing Bengal Lance and regulars interrupts. And with how the lines work now, not playing humid would lead us to being only able to end on just Spangle Lancer, whereas with the blind package we get a lot further. Without further ado, this is the board state as described. What we do now is that we link into Rosemary to search blend, then use it to place humid, search Rosa with humid, then use humid to gain and trigger Rosemary to special Rosa, which then triggers to special Laurel. Um, if you are interested in what to do with Blessed, 
It's a bit complicated. Uh, you want to summon Magnolia early, but you only Aroma and Grave is Jasmine at that point, which is what you want to special with Bless from Richard but can't if you banish it. If you know a way to extend in this situation with Bless wins, let me know in the comments. Anyway, getting back to the humid line, we link off into Jasmine, trigger Laurel and then trigger Jasmine to search Mulan. We now Miracle Fusion Magnolia as extra link material, we link off Rosemary and Magnolia into Bengalancer and use Bengalancer as our tribute for the to summon Muna. Muna searches Kon Kon, which sets she, and then we revive Bengalancer and pass on this boy. Now this may not look like much, but it is already, you know, three interrupts, and we are about to get a fourth because on the opponent's turn we can use Humid to search Rosalina as follow-up, and we use the Humid Cane to use Jasmine to search Princess for an additional interrupt on our turn. This is also why we have to leave Mudan on field, so that we still have the name necessary for Princess Negate to be live. Note that Rosa as follow-up is uh, still quite strong here, since the second Laurel is still left in the deck. Now, in the upcoming meta, um, there are a lot of shifter decks, so I have also seen some people ask as to you know, what to do when they get shifted. Uh, I thought I might as well show how to play under the effects of Shifter since Humid does improve Reliance slightly, assuming we have no extra extenders anyway. Uh, we can start with Lokai and just assume we got sent by Shifter for our opponent. Um, we normal summon Lokai, link it off into Dry to search Sowing, and then use Sowing to special summon another Lokai since obviously there is no Lokai in Grave for Twin to revive. And then we use the Dry's effect to summon Healer as per usual. We link off into Jasmine when Jasmine special Mulan from deck to add Kon Kon and Sechi. It's no reason to go through Petal here because Petal won't come back from the Banish, obviously. Um, this would be where we would have stopped before, but assuming that you don't have access to Princess already, uh, there is no need to keep the Rika name on field and we can go just a bit further uh, if we play Human. We do this by linking off into Rosemary, Search and Blend and placing Human again. Then Humid Search and Gain, Rosemary Special, or Rosa Special Laurel as per usual. Uh, since Laurel does not trigger when it goes into the Banish, we link off Rosemary and Rosa into Bengalancer instead, and can on an extra interrupt. Note that Bengalancer is absolutely useless if you are playing against Kash, so if you have Princess on hand, just don't go through your Roma stuff and pass on the old board instead if you find yourself facing that back. Um, now we have a few deck building ideas. First of all, I think that Virions seem mandatory to play through, specifically Imperm and Dryas, which more people now are doing, which I also believe is the correct play because Dryas is at one. And similarly, uh, several copies of Sowing can be a powerful extender through specifically like Imperm and Dryas or just, you know, to turn any summonable plant that is, you know, level 4 or lower into quite a bit of bodies. Uh, it may be worth cutting some underwhelming cards like Primula and cutting some engine down. For example, we could try cutting more than one um, in order to fit more non-engine. Primula also doesn't come up in any of these combos um, because in the first combo, you would just go through both of your strenders already, so there's no real reason to be searching for Primula in the grand game anyway. And in the super poly, more super poly resilient combo, we still have Snowdrop left in deck, so we won't have any issues with accessing a second strena. If you are playing additional bricks, I also believe you want to play more than 40. We already had, you know, an almost critical amount in just 40 before, and we will have to play a slight bit more now. So we are probably looking at lists with like 50 cards, 45 minimum, but really it should be 50. And since we don't have to play fresher, we can also consider playing SP or Super Poly instead. That was all, of, you know, for me for today at least. Uh, if you have any suggestions uh, for how to improve the deck otherwise, or you know, just have some input to give, please just provide it in the comments. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will maybe see you another time. Until then, uh, like and subscribe. Have a good night. Peace.